All right, good morning. I'm Aaron Heiser of Maker's Leather Supply, and this is the Lux Handbag Part 2 video. Part 1, we got a lot of pieces uh, lined and um, did some edge burnishing on pieces that needed to be sewn together uh, in this video. So, um, that being said, I'll just kind of briefly review everything we're going to sew in this video. One, we're going to take these two funny looking pieces here, and we're going to sew them together on the curved edges so that when they're sewn together, they'll form a dome. All right, this will be the end of the bag and it's gonna dome out, I guess you could say, okay? This is the hardest part to sew in any of this. Everything else is just regular old hand stitching. This is also regular old hand stitching, but as you curve those two pieces together, like I don't like to glue them beforehand or anything because it's just difficult. Um, the glue's not going to want to stay because there, there is a lot of bend that these have to go through. Um, mine is a little bit thicker than most probably will be because I use the bridle as my uh, interior. Um, so hopefully yours will be a little bit easier than mine was. But I'll show you how we do this. Um, let's see here. This uh, wrap over the top flap, we need to just sew it. So it's liner to it. I mean, it's already glued. It's already burnished but running a stitch around there is going to look a lot nicer. Um, we'll do the other side of this bag um, in this video, but I went ahead and pre-did these two strap hangers right here. Okay? Um, but again, this is one side of the bag. We need to do it to the other side of the bag. Then, we're going to sew the zipper onto these two pieces. All right, so basically how those two are sitting right there, there will be a zipper between them. Um, it's real easy. We're going to separate the zipper first, and then we'll sew one, in, one side on, one side on. Then we'll build the zipper afterward. Um, but we won't actually build the zipper until the end of the bag, um, because we need two separate pieces uh, once this is sewn to the, each of the sides of the bag. So, that's what we're going to do. Um, a lot of hand stitching. I know everybody was like, well, when the heck is part two going to come out? Well, it takes a while to hand stitch all this stuff. And that's why I've already pre-done half of it. Hopefully I can do most of the rest of it today and have this video out to you today. Um, but we'll see. You can always tell when it takes me more than a day because I'll be wearing a different shirt. Hopefully. Anyway, um, so without further ado, we'll get to it and I'll show you how I punch my holes in these two curved pieces to get them to line up. Okay, here we go. Coffee cup out of the way. So what I do is, I'm gonna take these two pieces and you need to make sure that they are two, that when they're either face to face or back to back, that they're lining up perfectly, okay? Because we have two lefts and two rights. All right, one for each end of the bag, all right? The other two are already sewn together, so no biggie. So what I'm going to want to do is sew these together. I'm going to go ahead and put them together um, just like this. All right, um, where I've got blue facing up and blue facing up on both sides. Um, so I've got the same angles on both sides. And anyway, they are exactly mirrored to each other, and they're, they're now stuck together. And I'm going to take these clips, and I'm going to put them all along the edges of the flat side because again we're sewing the curved side so I need to hold together the flat side and it's very important to use enough clips that this thing's not going to move on you okay and you're about to see why so I do that then I get my uh, my wing divider here okay and I draw me a, a, a stitch line down the edge of it the curved edge. Can't state that enough. The curved edge is what we're sewing. Okay? Now, I'm going to take my little five prong uh, stitching fork here because it's the only one that I can really follow that curve with without noticing that it would be flat areas. And I'm going to go along and I'm going to punch these holes right here in this thing. Starting at one end and going all the way to the other. Be very, very careful when you do this that you're punch is going straight through because on that back side there's there's not a ton of uh, of room for it and if it comes out the side then you got to remake that piece because that's just not going to look right okay so I go down 
and give it a little punch. Alright, always taking the last tine of my uh, fork and putting it in the last hole that was done so that I keep my spacing correct. Just like that. That one got close. The good news is that bottom one will end up being the back side, so it really won't be seen, but I still don't want to blow the edge out on it, okay? Got to make sure that these things stay up and down. All right, so you get the idea. I'm gonna pause the video and when we come back, um, I'll show you how I stitch these together. And again, there's no real rhyme or reason to it. it it's, it's kind of an ugly process, but we're gonna get her done. So, I've got all my holes punched, all right, along that curved edge there, there they are on the back side, all right, now, I'll take all the clips off of it, and when I sew this together, it's going to be like this, the, the finished side will be where my punch went through in the front, and then the back side will be where it came out on the back, okay, now, I am using um, our MLS hand sewing thread. Um, I'm using a, the royal blue color because it's just absolutely perfect for this project. Some projects, as you know, I really like to use a contrasting color stitch, um, but this one I think would look better with a, uh, a matching stitch. So I happen to have just the right color for that. Why not use it? Okay. Now, thread up my needles here. We're going to do a standard saddle stitch, but again, as you kind of bend this thing around, it's a little bit harder to manage than just a straight line stitch. I actually don't even end up using my stitching pony after a while. Um, I can start out with it, but once it starts to get a curvature to it, it's just easier not to and to put it on the, the table where I can manipulate it and push the sides together where they're needed to. Okay. So I'm going to start out. I'm going to start out two holes down. I'm going to back stitch and then I'm going to forward stitch just to make sure there's lots of strength on the top of that and then also it matches like when you do it that way back stitch a couple of holes and then forward stitch and then when you get to the bottom and you back stitch again the two ends match okay I haven't always done it that way uh, it's something I've been playing with it works out it has its intended purpose okay so the holes will line up perfectly as far as their distance goes, but again, as you start having to manipulate it and bend it around, it won't be so much. I'm gonna bring this up some so you can see more of what I'm doing here. Sorry about that. Freshly chewed fingernails don't pick up needles too well, do they? Nasty habit, but it's mine. These things wound up here. Alright, so there's my first stitch. Once they're held together, it is a little bit easier because you're not now having to manhandle two separate pieces. Now it's just one piece that needs to be bent around a little bit. really hard when I'm trying to do something like hand stitching and I'm more worried about what the camera can see than what I'm doing. <laughs> Make a lot of silly little mistakes like that right there where the thread just got wrapped around what I was sewing. Alright, so I'm going to stitch forward here and as I go down it, again, I'm just going to manipulate the two pieces to the point that the threads um, line up and then, you know, you're basically using your, your Titan um, 
at the end of every stitch when you go to pull it really tight that's when you're really bringing these pieces together um, sometimes I almost leave them separated enough that I can see in between them to get that needle in there um, you'll see what I'm talking about when you start to sew yours so anyway um, so I'm gonna saddle stitch all the way down this I may come back when I'm halfway done with it I don't know uh, but either way it's, it's gonna take a while it'll take twice as long as it does to do normal saddle stitching just because all the manipulation we'll have to do but uh, that is the next step we got to get all these pieces pre sewn together so that we can do the next part so until we get that done we'll be back all right so that is the hardest thing we're going to do today is sewing those together um, I don't know about you but after I'm done with them I really feel like my fingers need a break um, once you're done with them, I like to kind of pop them in and out like I just did there and uh, kind of run my fingers along them and everything and I want a really nice even bow. It'll, it'll try to be where there's like a flat spot, then an angle here, flat spot, and you just got to work that out a little bit, you know, maybe even press down in the middle a little bit to, uh, to get them nice where they have a nice uh, rounded contour to them, okay? So, next thing we got to do. This right here. This was the, um, this is the flap that goes over the middle of the bag. Um, purely an accessory because the bag also um, zips, you know, but we're making a fancy, fancy bag, not just a, uh, a functional bag, okay? So this thing right here, we're using this tuck clasp. Uh, it's from Tandy. Um, it is a, it just says tuck clasp, medium nickel plate. It's 11, it's stock number is 11113990302. So in case you uh, want to use the exact same one I'm using, it's a very high quality um, clasp. I'm very, very picky about any hardware I use. I want it to look nice and be high quality so it's not just going to break on me, okay? Now, if you notice, this has a wide end and a narrow end and your tuck clasp is going to go on your narrow end and I'm going to have to do some work to get it on there because my leather is way thicker than this tuck clasp is um, but I'm going to worry about that later basically I'm going to take a hammer and just beat the tar out of that edge until I can shove that thing on there and get it on there good and tight okay um, but I need to sew this and basically I'm going to sew three sides of it I'm going to start down here on the wide end and go all the way down it across the where the tuck clasp will be and then up the other side but I'm not going to sew the long end because that's going to sew to the bag later on okay so how do we do that Aaron same way we do everything pinky um, we're gonna take and just draw us a uh, scribe us a line for our stitching and it is going to run pretty much right down the center of our border there for uh, for our tooling. If you didn't do tooling then it's uh, about an eighth of an inch from the edge and then just like everything else we're gonna run our um, our forks down it. Um, there is a larger fork let me see if that it's gonna be too big for that area so once again I'm down to my five five tine fork. I do want to make sure that my very last hole down here is gonna match up where it can just go straight across the bottom here um, and that way when I stitch from here all the way around to here, then when I go to stitch it from the bag, I just create a new stitch line using those end holes um, to go to put it on the bag, okay? So I should, I guess, go ahead and draw me another stitch line back there so I know where to start. All right. So, again, put our forks in it. Knock our holes like we need to. Okay, and I'm using um, diamond punches on this one. Um, usually I use my pricking irons that I love so much, but because of that piece that we did a while ago, I'm using diamond punches. It just makes it a little bit easier to sew. I don't think they have the finesse that my normal pricking irons that you see me using in videos use, but again, um, they, they make it so much easier to pull your needles through and stuff like that because they do open up a larger hole, okay? So, I'm going to go all the way around this, and then I'm going to hand stitch it just as normal, just a normal saddle stitch. And um, when we come back, I'll show it to you, and we'll talk about what's next. Well, we'll, uh, we'll put the clasp on it. How about that? That's what will be next. All 
Alrighty, so got that all stitched up. See, nice and pretty, lots of stitches, front and back. Look at that. All right, so we got two more things that we need to sew together for this part of these videos. Okay, one of them is we need to put these on the other side of this. Okay, and the other one is we need to put the zipper onto these. Now, as I'm saying that, I'm looking clear across the room at where my tooled side of my bag is. So I'm going to pause this one more time and go over there and get that. No, we're right back. <laughs> All right, we're back. So this is uh, the tooled side of my, uh, my bag. Okay, the other side is just plain blue, as you saw. Um, I used my paper pattern and marked the areas that these little pieces go. All right. Um, I just used a little scratch all and just barely put a little indentation on the leather right there in the middle of what you see. Now, I need to temporarily glue these pieces to those areas so that I can stitch them on. Now, how this is going to work is where the flat side is. Um, turn that around so it's easier for you to see where the flat side is. There will be something that slides behind this to hold D-rings later. So when we glue and sew, we're only going to glue and sew the curved edges of these pieces. Okay? So we get them where we... They're going to set, make sure that they look good and straight compared to the um, overall piece there. I'll grab my contact cement here. And um, I could spend my time roughing up the leather here and everything, but honestly, it's, it's a little bit risky. I don't want to accidentally scratch other parts of my leather. So I'm just going to use the contact cement and glue them on as is. Again, I'm just going to put a little bit on the curved edges here. Um, and then I'll do the same thing, uh, getting some on the, the bag body just right inside those lines that I put on with my, my scratch hole. Okay, and I'm going to get some of that excess glue off there because the more there is, the longer it takes to set up and dry. Now, again, I'm going to do it just inside those lines there. Doesn't have to be pretty by any means, but I don't want it to get outside of those lines at all because I don't want to see glue on my final project. So I want to make sure it stays inside those lines. just a little bit while it sets up I'm gonna go ahead and do the other side too that way we're killing a couple of birds with one stone This is our water-based contact cement that I'm using. I've uh, been playing with it the last few projects I've done. I really like it. I'm not throwing away my jar of solvent-based contact cement by any means, but this stuff's pretty nice. Okay, I'm gonna give that a couple of minutes to set up, and once it's clear and not white, then I'll know it's ready to stick together, and um, we'll be right back. Actually, you know what? We're just going to keep rolling because we'll set something else up while we're waiting. Let's um, talk about this zipper. So, again, I am hand stitching every part of this bag that uh, you can see. Um, there will be a couple of little s s stitches I do that are not going to be hand sewn just because they can't. They won't be seen, and it'll save me a lot of time. Um, 
but those will come later. All right, so I am using the um, silver colored zipper for this project because the clasp that I'm going to use on the bag is also silver colored and it's the only clasp I can find. I really love using brass hardware, um, solid brass. Problem is, not everything comes in solid brass, uh, or I can't find it, but those clasps are one of the things I can't find um, in the, uh, the solid color. All right, now I'm going to stick the zipper on with double-sided tape, just like I do in all my other projects. But since I'm hand sewing, I really don't want to sew through the double-sided tape by hand. Um, it gums up your needles, it just makes everything weird. It's just not the best, you know? So, I'm going to look at how wide... Alright, so what I'm going to do is, I'm going to take my handy dandy knife here, my, it could be a scalpel, it could be whatever, but something small blade, and I'm going to cut my tape in half. All I have is quarter inch tape, as far as how small it is. Um, Dandy sells an eighth inch tape that's pretty nice, but I don't. I don't um, have the resource for it, so I don't have it. So, that being said, I am splitting this tape in half just by running my knife right down it while it's still on the roll, and you don't want to press so hard that you do multiple layers of it. You just want this one layer to be split. There we go. All right. So I'm going to use an eighth of an inch of tape instead of a full quarter on my zipper. So, okay. Sorry about that. Um, so, there we go. Um, I take the tape, I lay it right along the, just the very edge of the zipper uh, tape, okay? And that way when I do my stitch line, I can do it just on the inside of that tape, and I uh, hopefully won't get too much of that double-sided tape in my, uh, my stitching, okay? It won't, it won't affect anything as far as the look of it or the function of it or anything like that. It just really sucks to be stitching along and all of a sudden you're stitching through double-sided tape and things are gumming up. I don't really have that problem with the sewing machine as much as I do doing it by hand. Here we go. First piece I pulled just wasn't quite long enough, so the second one will be. All right, so I am going to take the uh, the backing off that tape and go ahead and stick this to my leather. Now you want your zipper to overhang just a little bit. You don't want it just run right up to the very edge of your leather. Um, you want it to overhang some because we've got to put um, basically tabs on the end of our zipper so that you have something to hold when you zip it open and closed. This is the style will have a basically the zipper will overhang the side of the purse a little bit. Um, kind of like we've done on some of the other bags we've done. I'm taping that entirely too close. I need to back it up a little bit. All right, I just want the zipper wide enough that I know the uh, zipper slide will go through there. Okay? So about an eighth of an inch is all I need from the edge of the leather to the teeth of the actual zipper. And then, of course, I also want to make sure that the zipper goes down straight. You don't want to see it wavering back and forth like a crooked road in between your pieces of leather. Okay? Now, got one tape down. I'll do the exact same thing on the other one. Um, 
You don't have to worry about perfectly lining them up left and right just yet. We'll get to that point. Oops, I grabbed the wrong end of the tape roll there. It will be easier to do the second side because now your zipper is being held somewhat straight and rigid by being taped down on the other side. I love this tape, but it's kind of hard to break where you want it to break. Um, usually I have to cut it to get it. All right, so again, I don't have to worry about perfectly lining these two sides up um, as much as I do just making sure that they're even distances away from the zipper um, teeth. We will worry about lining them up left and right wise uh, once we go to assemble the zipper and put the slides on it. But there it is right there. Okay, and we're going to just do a standard um, stitch. I will actually separate these two halves so it's easier to stitch them in my clamp. To separate the zipper, you're just going to grab two ends of it and give it a little twist, and they should come right apart. There we go. Do it carefully because it is just stuck on there with tape. And then I can easily do my saddle stitch to... Uh, permanently affix that zipper to the leather. There we go. It would have done a lot easier from the other end, apparently. <laughs> All right, so no secret to it. I'm going to run me a guideline down, then I'm going to use my stitching prongs, and I'm going to hand stitch both sides of this all the way down. The reason I do not separate my zipper before installing it is because this zipper is one way. If I had this side of it running this way, but then I accidentally had flipped it over and glued it to the other side, then at the end of my bag, when I'm ready to assemble the two pieces with the slide, they will not go together. Okay? Um, in other videos you might have seen me and I'll take and I, when I do separate them before sewing them on I will uh, I'll mark the ends of them with a piece of marker or a marker or something so that you don't accidentally confuse those later but anyway um, nothing to see there it basically it's gonna be a standard saddle stitch all the way down it's gonna take me a while <laughs> but let's go ahead and glue these bad boys on I'm going to set them down and make sure I've got them good and straight before I press them. Okay. There's one. And almost the other. Not as straight as I want it. Now it is. Okay. Press it down there. Now. Uh, there it is. Again, I am only going to sew the rounded edges here. Okay, I'm not going to sew the, the flat top area. I'm just going to sew the rounded ed edges. Got my, um, my wing dividers here, and I'll draw me a little stitch line in there. Um, it's, it's not quite an eighth of an inch. I tightened them up just a little bit because I want this to be kind of a fine stitch. There we go. Now, when I did this side, when I did my stitching, I actually started my stitch. I started it two down. I went back and then I made sure one hole was actually off of this uh, the overlay piece here okay um, it just to me that's a nice handcrafted look to it um, it's it's purely a, 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 a personal preference that really doesn't serve a real purpose as far as strength and stuff like that but I do like how it holds it down on the top and when we have another piece of leather slid in there 
it won't let it separate. It won't let it pull apart in that area, okay? Um, so that's my recommendation. Again, I'm going to use my, uh, actually no, I'm going to use my two-prong punch this time because there's so much um, curvature that I can't use the four-prong punch. Okay. So there's my very first one. One hole is off of the uh, overlay piece and the other one is on the overlay piece. And that's how we do that. Okay, and then I'm going to take my time. I'm going to go all the way around this. And then I'm going to saddle stitch it down. And that's it. That's the prep work we're going to do today for video number two. Um, I'm really hoping that tomorrow I can be already on video three after I've sat and done all this hand stitching. <laughs> and um, it will be most of the main assembly of the bag. Okay. Uh, we're, we're getting somewhere. We're doing a lot of prep work here to get all the little pieces together. And then it's going to be real quick once we go to put all the big pieces together. So until next time, I'm Aaron Heiser of Maker's Leather Supply. This has been the Lux, excuse me, Lux Handbag Part 2. And uh, Part 3 is coming soon. Thank you.